Hi, I'm Billy Mitchell with FedScoop TV. Today I'm here with Mina Shung, Health, Health Data Advisor at the U.S. Digital Service. How are you, Mina? Fine, thanks. How are you? Good. Great to have you here today. Thank you. So today we're going to talk a little bit about data and its prefluence in government and uh, the innovation around it. And there's a lot of buzzwords that are coming around data today, open data, big data, et cetera. Um, but I wanted to ask you first off, where do you see the progress actually being made around data? Where do I see the progress being made in government? Yeah, with, with data in government. So I think that there is a few answers to that. First of all, there are a ton of buzzwords, but I think to me what's really important is how do you distill it back down to how do we provide services to our constituents and to the sure. American people, right? And um, so, you know, we can talk about all these buzzwords, but in fact, commercial companies that collect lots of data, they also don't talk in terms of buzzwords. They talk in terms of service delivery and how do you target individuals yeah. better, how do you do a better job of surprising and delighting your customers. Um, we have always collected a ton of data as the government. I think we have at various times um, been able to store and analyze it better or worse, but I think right now we're in a process of rapid modernization to try and take all of the information that we already have on people and make it more technologically available. So I think that there have been great strides made in achieving that. I think there's also, we're coming to a place right now where there's a really challenging data governance question, right? So you sort of say, okay, so we've always been collecting all of this data. There's a ton of data that everyone is comfortable with the government collecting about them. At the same time, the private sector is moving in such a way so that we're all getting more comfortable with the fact that our phone knows stuff about us, that cell phone companies know our location because they have to to provide yeah. cellular service. Um, we're all used to you know, Google tracking certain aspects of our data because it makes our lives very convenient. And we've sort of gotten, com and you know, privacy on Facebook used to be something that people kind of were concerned about and now much less so. So I think expectations, and that's expectations in the public, but also amongst employees in the government. So. I think the, the sort of confluence of these things means that now we have a really interesting opportunity to revisit, okay, how do we think about data governance? Like what is okay for us to do with data? What is not okay for us to do with data? And I think that's a continual conversation. Yeah. And there's a lot of technology that enables us to make decisions about that that are different. In the past, we've stored a lot of PDFs and a lot of paper. And at that point, you have to decide who has to have um, uh, who has to have the paper stored in hand, but that doesn't force you to have the same sorts of conversation as when the data is highly mobile. So, so I think that there has been a lot of progress in that area, yeah. but, but I think it means that we really have to re-engage the public and, and figure out what people care about. And you spoke a little bit to this, but my next question has a little bit to do with culture. Um, data innovation is a, as much about technology as it is culture, uh -huh. um, but where do we stand with that culture change and the attitude that uh, you have to have open data first. Um, where, where's the culture going right now? Um, so when you say culture change around data innovation, I think very buzzwordy. But I think there's, <laughs> um, I think there are scenarios where open first is incredibly important, and there are scenarios where I think we have research to do. I think this comes back a lot to the data governance sure. question, right? Um, my default is to say, as long as you're transparent about what you're doing, and as long as you get a lot of feedback from your constituency, at least testing things is um, an acceptable thing to do. And I think we've mm -hmm. shown that time and again. I do think that there are um, you know, open questions. And, and you know, what's really interesting is if you look at folks in government, they, um, there is a culture of making sure data stays secure in a way that there isn't in the public sector. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is good. That is the job of government. At the same time, I think there are inherent limitations in data security and the damage that can be done using data. And I think it's important for us to sort of think about um, a risk management and sort of a heuristic for, for um, risk benefit as opposed to um, strictly sort of a, a warehousing slash a bunkering yeah. strategy. So, but um, open by default seems like a good hypothesis to start with. I think there's, I think the jury is um, still out on, you know, what our ideal sure. uh, method for all data is, but I think for a lot of categories of, of data, 
we have a fundamental mandate to the population to be transparent and to show them where their dollars are going, what policy, what our policies are motivated by, all of that. So I think open is in the service of democracy. Cool, cool, be cool yeah. to see. So more buzzwords um, <laughs> as the worlds of open data, big data analytics, and mobile kind of converge together. Um, what kind of impacts do you see those bringing? What kind of effects is that going to have on like interagency collaboration? So I would actually be interested in saying, how does this affect democracy, right? Yeah. So there are you know, a certain population of folks who do not have everyday access to a computer, sure. but almost everyone in America now has access to a phone. And the interesting question is, OK, so how do we start to engage the population in a way that um, allows everyone to be heard in a way that was really challenging to do before. I think at the moment, you know, you know, 30 years ago, everyone could go to the polls and everyone can write a letter to their congressman or the president. But to get more granular detail and to structure that data and to really learn things about it was really hard. Um, now we have ways of getting feedback and getting public opinion and getting people engaged that were never possible in the past. So how can we use that to really strengthen our democracy, understand how to serve our constituents better. In terms of collaboration across government agencies, I think there are, you know, some of what we talked about earlier with regards to data mobility can really help that. Yeah. Um, I do think that this brings into the limelight some of the challenges of the way that the government is split up as well. I think that, you know, this will eventually spark a conversation about how discrete things need to be versus the ways that they can blend together as well. Sure. Um, so. Cool. And then lastly, you know, all things considered, what we've been talking about with the, the growth of data and everything, um, what's the IT, the federal IT worker of tomorrow going to have to know coming into this and what are they going to have to be ready for? I think it's really similar to the private sector. I mean, I think that if you look at the private sector, explosion in data usage and um, benefits from that. There was a McKinsey report, right, that said that we're going to need something like twice as many, like we're going to have a shortfall of half a million um, knowledge workers with the ability to do at least some degree of more sophisticated data analytics than your average um, knowledge worker. And I think the same ratios apply in government. Like we should, we should strive to be as good um, at providing analytics and at evaluating our ability to execute against our mission as the private sector is. So I think we're going to need you know, exactly the same capabilities. We're going to preferentially hire folks who really understand both modern technology, right, because we're providing services via modern technology, and mm -hmm. also who are understanding um, how data analytics works. OK. Well, cool. Well, that's all I have for you, Mia. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate you sitting down with us today. Absolutely. Um, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm Billy Mitchell with FedScoop TV. Thanks for watching.